Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be going over how to create master bias dark and flat files and what to do with them after that. So these are the calibration files that we received for our particular data set. Normally these come in one big folder with all of the files in the same spot, but I find it easier if you split them up into three folders. Now each of these we're going to make a master for, but we're going to have to do them in different steps. You guys heard about what bias dark and flat frames are. Now the tricky part is that bias frames, so the, the bias in a telescope, which is the electronic background noise taken in any image with the telescope, is going to be in the images that we took for darks and flats. It's going to be in the background of these images. So we're going to have to take it out of only one of these um, before we process anything else. Now we're going to take it out of the flats. The reason we don't take the bias out of both before we turn them into masters is because if we took it out twice and then applied both of these to our science images, then we would have taken out too much bias from the image. We can only do it once. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a master bias. Then we are going to apply the master bias to the flat frames here. And then from the flat frames that have been processed with the master bias, we're going to create a master flat. Then independently, we're gonna create a master dark and then we will apply those to our science. So let's start with the bias frame. We're gonna go into Astro Image J and import an image sequence, find the bias folder, click that and open it and it's 16 images. So that sounds right. It's always gonna be a square number, either nine or 16. So here's our bias frame. Hooray. Uh, that import process doesn't really matter. It just needs to be, something needs to be open for us to process it. All right, so we're gonna to go to process, go to data reduction facility, now, this is looking very complicated. Just ignore this window over here, the DP coordinate converter. Let's start with this one. Yours will probably not look like this. I've fiddled around with this a bunch, so it looks a little bit different. Um, for now, just uncheck everything on this side. The first thing, so no matter what that is, if all of these are selected, make sure you uncheck all of them. But all we're doing right now is BIOS. So we're gonna click build on the BIOS. We're not enabling it. We're not applying it to anything yet. We'll do that in a later step. So we're gonna build the bias by going into, this is the folder where we are looking for the bias frames. So we're gonna go into that folder. That's gonna be here. And here's the funny thing. You can actually choose the frames depending on what the file name is. So for example, if you want it to be flat frames, you could type in flat. It would be just whatever these first, word, first letters are here. But we want these frames. So we want all of them selected. So we're not gonna type in the individual frame name. We're just gonna type in bias and then you'll notice that nothing has come up because if we just left it at that it would only select a single file if that that single file's name is just bias.fit we need to add an asterisk adding an asterisk means that anything after bias counts so it has 16 frames we want to make sure we save it to the right spot so this is where it's going to be saved so you want to choose a good spot for that nope we don't want that one that's in one i processed earlier we want the backup Let's save it in the calibration files folder. And we're gonna save it as something called mbias.fits. That's the file that it's gonna spit out. Make sure all those are unchecked, then hit start. Perfect, it's done. Let's close everything and open up that file, make sure that we've got it and it looks good. So file open, there's our new mbias file. Let's open it up, looks great. Now, the next step is to apply this master file to our flat frames. And then the flat frames that have it had the master file apply, master bias file applied will go to a different folder, and then we can use that folder of images to make a master flat. So now that we've got this master bias open, let's go to process data reduction facility again. This time we're not going to build it, we're just going to enable it. And this was exactly where we saved it the last time with the exact file name that we saved it under the last time. So just check to make sure that there's a one here, that there's one file that we are enabling. And we're going to choose, this is the science image process, processing, we're gonna choose the files that it's going to apply to. So head over to that folder, make sure you go and find the right folder that has the flat images in it, you pin. And now you'll notice this is from a leftover science run. Uh, there are no images selected, so we need to change this to flat, which is the start of our flat file name. So you'll see that here. 
and now we've got nine images selected, perfect. So now this master bias is going to be subtracted from all of the flat frames, giving us flat frames that have had their bias taken away. So let's give that a go. Perfect, all done, everything looks good. All the files, this has just opened the last one so that we can see it. All the files have had their bias taken away. Let's make sure they were saved in the right spot. Yes, so here's where they tell you where to save it when we did this. Um, it saves the calibrated images in a separate folder that, had, that it creates called pipeline out and it adds the suffix out to them. So we can close all of this and go look for those images in our folders. Perfect, so here's our main folder with our bias, master bias and our all calibration frames. If you go to the flat ones, pipeline out, here's all of our processed flat images. So next step, we now have to make a master flat out of these. You're gonna be experts at this by the end of it. So we don't even need to import an image sequence, let's just open any old image. There we go, that's fine, how lovely. Uh, now we're going to go to, oopsie, sorry. This image, we're gonna go process, data reduction facility, ignore that window. We're not applying this to any science right now. We're just not, we're not even building bias frames. We're building a flat frame. And so now we have to choose our file spots again. So this time we are collecting images from the pipeline out file in the flat frame folder. And that's got zero so far, that can't be good. Don't lie to me. They're there, I know they're there. Why aren't you choosing that? Hmm. Ah, oh, here's the problem. If you do that and it comes up to zero, these files are not dot .fit. They are dot .fits. So just a heads up, if you run into that issue, um, the file type might be different. So try adding an S to it and that should bring up the nine of them. So we have our location here. Uh, and now we are going to find our save location for the master flat file, which will be the same as our location for the master bias, which was in, let's just check that. Yeah, in here with the bias dark and flat. So we're gonna go to calibration files. This will be where our flat, our master flat saves. So right now we are building our flat from this data, which we had to add an S4 for the file type. And it's gonna come out as an mflat.fits file. Let's give it a try. Finished, let's go look. All right, well, the master flat is there, so let's open up the master flat and see what it looks like. Pretty good, pretty good, yep, that looks awesome. So you'll, what you'll notice when we made a master flat is that the stars that were in the background of this image have all disappeared. Now we just have the vignetting of the telescope left behind. All right, so we've made our master bias, which we actually no longer need because we applied it to our flat frames, and we have our master flat. Now we just need to make our master dark, which is the easiest step of the process, you go, um, you have to, <laughs> shouldn't have closed that. You open up a file, let's open up the dark just for the sake of that. Here's our dark frames. This is an exposure of nothing for 30 seconds with the lens cap on. So we're gonna go to process data reduction facility again. This time we are building our dark and we're gonna once again, choose the right folder for that. So we're building it out of frames in the dark folder. Add those in. And we've got our, this happens to be right. If it's not right and they're not coming up, just check the file type and make sure it's okay. And then we're gonna save it to the same spot that we want it saved to with the other masters. Gonna be in here, select. Okay, we are building it. We're not enabling it. We're all set. Let's start. All done, let's take a look at it. 
it's there. That's great. Let's open our master dark. Hooray! So this highlights, you can see it a lot better now, all of the pixels, the hot pixels, um, the broken pixels, all that sort of stuff, uh, now that the noise has been taken out of the background. Um, you can still see the bias, so you can see that it's light over here and dark over here, um, but of course the bias was taken out of the flat frames, so we don't need to take it out of these as well. Now, processing the science set is actually pretty easy after this point. It may take a while, but let's give her a shot. Here's all of our data for WASP-52B taken on August 27th. So what you do is you go to, we can just open any old file again. Let's open the master dark because it's there. We're gonna go process, data reduction facility. Have you figured out the pattern yet? Except this time, we're not gonna build a dark, we're not gonna build a flat, we're not gonna build a bias, we're not gonna use the bias. All we're gonna do is we are going to enable our flat and dark files. These should each have one highlighted, just make sure that that has one each. Um, this is enabling the files that we already made. Reminder that the bias is accounted for in the flat image, so that's why we're not using the bias here. And then we are going to enable science image processing. We're gonna find the right files though, because right now it says it's our flat files. So just head up to the raw data, select, and of course zero files are selected. We actually have to check to see what the start of it is. Start of it is WASP-52B. So we're just gonna go WASP-52B star. And there's 360 images to process. They're going to go into a folder also titled pipeline out, but this time in the data folder that we have here. And they're going to have the dark and the flat. Well, they're going to have their dark subtracted away from it and the flat will be, or it will be divided by the flat image. So the flat image shows where parts of any image taken with the telescope will be overexposed. So when you divide by the flat image, you bring down the overexposed areas and you bring up the underexposed areas. So we have our bias and our flat masters ready to go here. And we are going to subtract the darks from this data set and divide by the flats, divide this data set by the flats. You ready, set, go. This process could take up to five or 10, maybe 15 minutes, depending on how much RAM you give to the program. Uh, so we're gonna come back once it's all done. We'll see you in a few minutes. Alrighty, it looks like we're all done here. It says it's all finished. Didn't look like there were any errors. We should be all set. It's opened up one file from the processing. Uh, so let's just take a look, import the image sequence and take a look and see how it looks. Uh, and we'll compare it to the old image sequence just to see what it looks like. We can close all this because it's all done. So let's import an image sequence. So here's our, our original two files. Here's our original data. And then this is our process data. So we'll open up this and import that image sequence of 360 images. Okay, that took a little longer than expected, so I, I let you guys skip that section. Here's our process data images. As you can see, the background is all consistently black all the way across. There is the odd hot pixel, so you can see this kind of jumping around, um, but those are things that we can't account for, uh, and they won't really affect our data too much. If you scoot forward, you'll see it, there's our meridian flip, which we'll deal with later. Let's just open one image from our non-processed images, just to see what it looks like by comparison. Perfect. Okay, so you see the difference in those two? Where this one is much blacker, it's much more consistent. This one has a light spot here and a dark spot here. This is consistent across the board. Even when you jack down the histogram or jack up the histogram, it looks like a gray background. Whereas if you jack up the histogram on this, let's do it. Come on, let me try. You can see that it's not that consistent all the way across. So that is how you apply, that's how you create and master bias, dark, and flat frames and how you apply them to the science data. Our sequence is all set here and ready to go. Don't worry if you change the histogram data, nothing's gonna affect the actual data. That's This is the histogram down here. Don't worry about that. Um, and now we are ready to do the science processing. That includes stabilizing and fixing this, this flip here. Uh, and that's what our next videos are gonna be about. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for joining. If you have questions about bias, dark, or flat frames, uh, please email me. My email will be in the description. Thanks everybody for watching.